Good afternoon, Ollie. Thank you for joining us for this podcast about the census today. To start with, um, would you be so kind as to tell us about how you first got involved with the census and how long you've been working on it at the UK Data Service? Yeah, uh, good afternoon and, and thank you for having me on the podcast. My uh, background in the census, I start with the 1991 census. That's the first one I was involved in with as a researcher. Uh, earlier censuses, I'd used the data as a student, for example. I was involved with the team working on the special migration statistics from the 1991 census. I worked as a research assistant in Leeds, uh, wrote some programs for doing Q&A of the data and then for doing bespoke extracts of the data. And then a little later on, that led me to work uh, in preparing some interface systems for outputs from both the 1991 census and the 2001 census. Again, working on the special migration statistics and the special workplace statistics. That was done as part of the ESRC census program, and that went through various phases um, through the 2000s. And then we joined up uh, as part of a uh, value-added part of the UK data service. So as a value-added part of the UK data service, we worked as a group of institutions providing census data for researchers, for students, for people outside the UK. And again, I was working on the interfaces for the special migration statistics and special workplace statistics. Um, providing access both to the 2011 results as they came out and also to the earlier results from 2001, 1991 and 1981. Excellent. And what is it different that the UK Data Service provides to researchers with access to census data that's different from other organisations such as the ONS? Yeah, well in the part of uh, UK Data Service I work on which is uh, origin destination or flow data, we occupy quite an important niche position in that we make those data sets available to users in a way that users can extract particular subsets of the data they want. The data aren't directly available from ONS. ONS provides sort of onward instructions for users to come to us or to go to NOMIS. Um, and our colleagues in NOMIS provide single downloadable files of data rather than queryable files. So we provide a opportunity for users to generate extracts of data. We also provide extracts to safeguarded data. So unlike most of the census, which is uh, open license, the safeguarded origin destination data, you have to be a academic or someone else within the UK public sector in order to be allowed to use them. And there are some further restrictions on what you can do with the data. So we provide access to those. We've also collaborated with the Greater London Authority um, and users of SASPAC, which is a commercial package used by local authorities, um, and we've assisted their users in downloading and installing safeguarded data uh, for their use. So that's, that's a useful collaboration that we've done, I think. And what sort of difference does this kind of access um, make to uh, researchers and how important is it to their work? The access we provide, I believe and hope is really useful to researchers. One of the things across the whole of UK data service that we specialize in with census data is providing access to UK versions of data. Uh, the census agencies, the Office for National Statistics in England and Wales, NISRA in Northern Ireland, NRS in Scotland, they publish their own data and statistics about their own territories, which is great, but they don't publish data on the whole about the whole of the UK, which is where we come in. We're able to provide our expertise and value added to bring in data from those three agencies, assemble them together into UK level data sets that researchers can use. As well as joining up 
for the UK, we also provide a historical perspective that as well as data from the most recent census, at the moment, 2011, we also provide data from older censuses, 2001, 1991, etc., back to 1971 for area statistics and back to 1961 for anonymized samples of microdata. So really the service that the UK Data Service provides is very specialist and, and unique and quite essential for the work of researchers, would you say? Yeah, I think we're a very unique uh, proposition. I don't think there's anywhere else that provides direct interactive access to the long sort of history of recent, and when I say recent, I mean kind of post-war census data. As I said, we've got data from 1961 onwards. Very few other organisations, if any, have that easily available to users, to researchers. We also have good connections with uh, other colleagues um, at Essex who provide access to anonymised ex uh, extracts, anonymised records from historical censuses. And what kind of insights into societal challenges can be gained from using the census data? Can you provide any examples of where that's been put into practice? Yeah, the census provides obviously a unique picture of the makeup of the nation. Um, and that's used all the time. Anytime you look at a survey um, or you look at a small scale data set, that underlying it will utilize the census, not necessarily directly, but it will utilize the census and projections based on the census, estimates based on the census, in order for them to determine whether their census, whether their survey is representative or not. So the census underlines a huge amount of social science and under and other surveys in the UK. If we're looking at recent um, activity, recent research, even though the current data that we've got uh, are now quite old, they're from 2011, they're still in many cases very much the best data we've got and still entirely relevant for lots of research. So if we look at uh, analysis of COVID-19 infections, for example, we need data from the census or from estimates based on the census in order to provide the denominators for all those calculations. One of the things we made available quite recently um, with data given to us by ONS for provision through UK Data Service was a really detailed table produced newly from the 2011 census on makeup within households, who lives with who in households. If we look at the narrative of students going back to school, school children going back to school, for example, we know that there are potential risks from spread within schools that appears thankfully not to be as as significant as other sectors of the population. We also know that some school children live with elderly and other uh, vulnerable people. But nationally, we don't really have a very good idea of how many children live with, say, you know, 70 year old plus people. But this table from the 2011 census provides us with, inset, with insight of how many households are involved and whereabouts in the country there's more school children living with older adults. So that's a good example of how we can still make use of the 2011 census. And does that, does that, has that helped with a lot of the kind of work uh, research done um, during the COVID-19 crisis? To, to help kind of address some of the problems and issues that we're facing? I certainly hope so. Um, I'd say, yeah, yeah. Our, our, our understanding is that these population data based on estimates from the 2011 census are actively being used in COVID-19 modelling scenarios.